Hope you enjoyed the first part of our exclusive interview with John Gudetti. In this second part, we look ahead to the coming World Cup that he will participate in with Sweden in Russia. But first, we discuss this season that he started at Salta and finished here at Alaves. Enjoy! Looking at the start of the season when you were still at Salta, it was a new season with a new manager. How difficult was that for you, that situation? Well, I knew it was going to be difficult from the get-go uh, when the new manager came. Uh, but I thought, you know, take it on the chin, you know. Do your absolute best in pre-season, prove yourself, show them what you're about. And uh, I went and I did that and I scored in every single pre-season game. And it was looking, I was, I, was going to, I was going to be a star, you know, I've changed his mind. And uh, once again, last pre-season game against Roma, I, I, I break, my, break my bone into my shoulder and uh, I'm out for six, seven weeks. I have to do an operation. Nothing you can do really, you know, I got the penalty at least, so worth something, but then, uh, you know, that happened and after that I never really came into the team. I got one chance to play, I think it was against Abar away and I scored a goal, but then again I was back on the bench and I wasn't playing, I wasn't happy and, uh, you know. Uh, and then you came here to, to Alaves, how, how did that move come about and, and what attracted you with this club? Well, I saw the potential in the team, you know, yeah, they were under, under the line, you know, they were struggling at the moment, but I saw the potential in the team and... Uh, and they said to me, you know, we need we need someone with, with your with your passion and with someone to, you know, to, to try to to try to get back the passion and try to get back the spirit in the club, you know. So, and I, I like the way they were speaking. You know, they knew me very well. They have wanted me for a very long time. This wasn't the first time they were there, and and I, I've been here. I played here last year in the semi final in the cup, and I, I knew the way the stadium was rocking. And I like to play in an, uh, in an atmosphere like this, and when the stadium is rocking, and, and when I saw the potential, I said, this club surely can't go out you know the with the quality we have we should be up there you know and uh and uh i got a great connection with the manager as well you know i spoke to him and uh, the sporting director as well we hit it off perfectly you know if i was the sweet he liked the sweet in the candy bag as well so you know we saw eye to eye in that and uh, we had a great great chat together and uh, it felt like it was a perfect fit uh, and you seem to have gotten a quite good partnership with munir what makes a great partnership? It's about giving and receiving. I think it's about you know, <laughs> it's about both of it. You know, you just gotta, you gotta be able to give and you gotta be able to take as well. You know, make runs and sacrifices for each other and and you know, I'm good at the things maybe he's less good at and he's good at the things I'm less good at. You know, it's about making each other better players and uh, you know, he had to do a lot of things that he didn't want to do I think before I came here and when I came here I could do that job and I leave him do the other so in the end of the day if I go home and Munir score two and we win the game and I've, I've done the assistance that I'm, I'm equally happy. You spoke about Abelardo a little bit before can you tell us more about him what, what is his biggest qualities and, and what is his football philosophy? He's a winner you know you can see it throughout you know he always wants to win whether it's in training or if it's in the game or whatever you know he's very very serious in everything he does but at the same time a little bit like Berizzo you know you can have a great relationship with him outside the pitch you know before training you can stand you can have a joke you can laugh you know you, 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 he makes it feel like a family which is very important and Berizzo was the same you know he did that in a fantastic way but when it came down to business it's all about the business you know and it's 100% serious and you know He's gotten it absolutely spot on, you know, the way he works with everything, the way he speaks to the players, the way we train and the way we come out on the pitch together as a team, defend as a team, attack as a team, you know, he's just gotten it spot on and I think I think his career has just started and he's going to have an absolutely amazing career in, in the, as a trainer because, you know, he's up there with the, the best I've worked with. Uh, and with both Celta and with Alaves, you, you've scored against the, the biggest clubs in, in La Liga, against Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Valencia. Why do you think it is that you always score against the top clubs? I don't know, to be fair. You know, it's, uh, I try to score every game I play, or, or not even score. You know, I, I go out to try to win the game, you know, try to do the best for the team. And it, you know, the chances have fallen to me in the big games, which is obviously a pleasure, because, you know, to score against the big sides is... It's, it's a dream and uh, to, m to be able to do it it's really nice you know you can you, something you can tell your grandkids about when they when they get older you know it's, yeah yeah your dad's played days scored a few goals yeah it's nice so more than that you know it's I, I don't really know why it is you know I try I try to go out and do my best for the team every single time as again it's not about scoring goals or making assists it's about the team winning and you just got to make that got to work hard to try to make it the best for the team and try to try to be able to help the team in the best way you can uh, and you have had 
three good seasons here in Spain now, you're in your mid, mid 20s. Where do you see your, your career for forward? Where, where, where is it going? Of course, you know, I still dream big, you know, I want to try to become the best John I can be and try to become the best player I can be. Yeah, I've missed out a lot with injuries, you know, and hopefully touch wood. The, the, injuries are, the injuries are over now and hopefully I can stay fit and I would love to stay in Spain, you know. I, I love it in Spain right now and I'm very, very happy I can see myself playing here for many more years. And, you know, there's a lot of clubs in Spain that are playing amazing football. So, you know, as long as I can stay in, in Spain and, you know, try to go as, as high as I can, as big as I can and, you know, try to be the best John I can be, you know. Uh, and looking ahead to this summer, it's the first World Cup for Sweden in 12 years. It's your first World Cup. How exciting is that? Ah, it's amazing, you know. It's 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 a dream come true. It's a, it's almost surrealistic, you know. It's, it's to play a World Cup with your country. Not many babe, not many people get to do that. And uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really a bit lost for words, you know, because you can't really you can't explain it. I bleed blue and yellow, you know, that, that's the way I am and I, I'm a patriot, I love my country and, and for me to put on that yellow jersey, for me it's an absolute pleasure every time I do it and I feel such such pride to do it and to be able to go and represent my country in a World Cup, that that's just, uh, yeah, I'm lost for words really. From the outside you seem to be a really, really tight group, the Swedish national team right now, maybe more than, than ever before, how, how important do you think that is for for success in, at the World Cup? No, nah, it's crucial, let's be honest, you know, if we can look at it, Holland probably has better players than us if you look at them playing in bigger clubs. Italy probably have better players than us looking in better clubs. France as well, but you know, we didn't qualify because we have the best team or the best players. We qualified because we were a unit. We were the best team together. And I think, you know, football is not, it's not a sport by individuals. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. And we've just handled that in the absolute possible best way you could. You know, we, have, we, we're truly are, we truly are a team, you know. If, Seriously, if you Google team, it should be a picture of us. And, and obviously, probably the best player in the history of Swedish football is Slatan Ibrahimovic, and, and he's not decided not to go to the World Cup. Do you think this could be an opportunity for, for the team and the players that are there now to show that Sweden is more than just Slatan and we can do this without him as well? Sweden is more than Slatan, you know. Slatan is a great player, but Sweden is a it's a country with nine, ten million people, you know. So we have uh, many amazing people that live in Sweden. We have a fantastic, beautiful country. We Slatan is a, is a is an amazing footballer, and he's he's scored a lot of goals for the national team, and he's uh, you know he, he's a, he's a great person. But I think we've already proved as a team that you know we can still win football matches without Zlatan uh, and we have qualified for the World Cup without Zlatan of course it's a it's a loss to lose a, such a big player as him and, and not have him in the squad and in the dressing room because he's such a big personality and a, and, a, and a motivator and a winner but you know in the end of the day you can't sit there and say oh well, how are we going to win the World Cup now when we don't have Zlatan but that mentality you should just stay home you know you we have a mentality that we go there as a team and I think Sweden has always been been a strong team and, and we're going to continue to be strong. And three years ago you, you won the under 21 years with, with Sweden. Before the tournament you reached out to, to Danny M, uh, a Swedish musician, to, to make a song for it. Uh, how did that come about uh, and what, what importance did that song, we can say also <laughs> that the song was called Nya Sverige which means New Sweden. Yeah, and, uh, no you know I, I know a lot of the artists in Sweden, a lot of the big artists are good friends of mine and uh, I spoke to the, the national team and I said uh, because I think the women was going to play the Olympics at that time. So they were having a song made and I just said, yeah, are we going to get a song as well? And they said, no, we haven't planned one in. And I said, and then I spoke to the lads in the change room. They said, John, go on, have a word, you know, go make one happen. So uh, I spoke to my friends and we made it happen. And uh, yeah, we enjoyed it really much. We played it before every game. We played it after every game. And, uh, it was a truly a great song and uh, big up Danny M for making it. And yeah, it was nice. You had a quite good performance as well, uh, singing it on stage, <laughs> celebrating it. Not, not as good as he would have done it, but you know, I, I did my best. I hope I made him proud, so you know, it was nice. Um, so there, during a tournament, there must be, be a lot of waiting time. What, what do you do uh, between the matches and, and such? 
Yeah, Victor probably wants me to play video games with him, but uh, uh, me and Lustig and Ekdal probably won't, won't fancy that. So we'll sit and have a coffee, you know, watch the other games, play a bit of cards, you know, just sit and, uh, try to enjoy life, you know, try to enjoy being with each other. Uh, and, you know, a lot of coffees, a lot of card games and a lot of just recuperating, try to get ready for the next game. Yeah, and uh, finishing off the interview, we have a gift for you. All so right. you have something to do while we're waiting between the matches. All right, cheers. So here we have a, a Panini album. Okay. Um, and uh, and you can try to collect them all and see if you can can find uh, maybe John Gadetti. Nice. Uh, Even I got a few cards yeah. here, so I'm, I'm already you, four you in. Got a starter kit there. Yeah, got a starter kit. No, no Swedes though. But no, but I got. A, uh, I got the the guy from Tottenham here from Korea, so you know, gotta watch out for him. But that's all right. Uh, and if you don't get a, a Gudetti card, you could always draw yourself. Yeah, of course, <laughs> that would be great. Now, thank you very much. I, I'm, uh, I look forward to this. I look forward so to this a lot. Thank you so much. So you have something to do when you're at the World Cup. That's what I'm thinking. There's nothing you know. to do at the World Cup. I'll, I'll, I'll tell my friends to buy one as well, and we can compare yeah, cards. You and and yeah, you should. And then you can can exchange when you have doubles. Uh, exactly. And stuff like that. No, that's perfect. Thank you so much. So Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for, for taking your time to speak no to worries. us. No worries. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good luck at the World Cup. Thank you. Thank so you for I the I say present. especially as a Swede. Go Swede. <laughs> <laughs>